Hi everyone, it's Tammy with Shabby Fabrics. I have an adorable pillow to show you today. This is by Lella Boutique. This pillow right here is called Giving Season. I love the little gifts on it, the little teeny tiny bows. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make one of these little gift blocks. We'll set this back up here. This is the pattern. This is done with Christmas Eve. I'm using a mini charm pack to make this today. All right, that makes all of your little gifts. All right, let me show you a block so that you know where we're going. This is the block right here. So we have our little flying geese here. We have our ribbon and our gift and some background, okay? I have cut ahead of time out of my charm pack. So a couple of tips that I have on piecing very small things together. That's what I'm gonna show you today. First of all, I use a ruler to cut my pieces out. I did not use my mat because a ruler is far more accurate for cutting your pieces to the correct size. Whenever you're doing something small, you just need to be aware the more accurate you are, the better your finished results are gonna be. That's true in any quilting. Sometimes though in large quilts, you can fudge it a little bit. With little tiny pieces, that's not gonna happen. You don't, that fudge factor is gone. You do not have that. So I recommend using a ruler. These are cut to one and a quarter. This is cut to an inch. That's pretty little, okay? So now when I go to sew this together, the other thing that I'm using is I'm using smaller needles. I'm gonna use a 7010 Microtech Sharp needle. I'm not gonna use a large needle. I want a smaller hole. I'm also using a, a finer thread. I'm gonna use a 50 weight by Aurifil, and I like this Carrera color builder. There's a black, white, and a silver in here, and I'm using silver today. That is so smart to use a 50 weight thread. That's less thread in that seam allowance to bulk out your seam allowances when you're trying to press things flat on a larger quilt, you can get away with using larger, heavier weight thread. But on little tiny micro pieces like this, you're gonna wanna use a finer thread, all right? Also something very fine are my pins. These are the extra fine patchwork pins by Clover. These are a must. These pins are very, very sharp. They're very, very fine and they will help you tremendously. This is my favorite pin. I do use these all the time. The other things on my table here, I've got a friction pen. We're gonna use that to mark our lines with. Wonder clips for when you're putting your pillow together. A seam guide. If you're having trouble with a quarter inch, use a seam guide. That's, that's easy. Get your seam guide attached on there. We've done videos on how to use these seam guides. They are amazing. I do have one on my machine right now and we will be using that when we go sew. A fresh blade and of course an Ulfa rotary cutter. That's always a must. And if you have used blades and you don't know what to do with them, I recommend a blade saver. This is amazing. I love this blade saver. I did put a used blade in here. If you're chain piecing, it makes it very easy just to move your pieces along and cut them. A great use for a used blade instead of just having them in a pack. When that gets dull, you simply pick this up. It comes right out of here and just rotate it to another portion of your flower. And now you've got a fresh side of that blade. I have a little spinning mat on my board today. Wool pressing mat. I like a wool pressing mat. It's gonna press your seams flat. And I have my Panasonic cordless iron. So let's get started and make a block. We're gonna set this aside and I'm going to take these three pieces. I'm just gonna put one on top of here. Now, normally you would think you'd take this to your machine and just sew it. Instead, I'm actually going to take a pin and I'm gonna pin this. And you're thinking, wow, that's really little. Well, I need this to be highly accurate, all right? So I am gonna put a couple of pins in here. I am pinning away from my seam allowance so that I can sew all the way down without having to remove my pins, okay? So let's go do that. Okay, so this is attached to my machine already. I know that this is a quarter of an inch. 
from the Cluck Cluck Sew Tape that we have on here. So I'm just attaching my seam guide next to that. And now my fabric comes up right up to that and I know I'm gonna run a perfect quarter inch, all right? So the other thing I've done is I have reduced my stitch length to 2.25. Normally on the Bernina, it's 2.50. I did reduce it to 2.25. Think small, right? We have a smaller needle. We have smaller things, finer thread, smaller stitch length. It all just kind of makes sense, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press this. And I'm gonna press this to the white. I'm gonna come away from the center. If I were to press all towards the center, what happens is, what happens is then all this bulk is just gonna get wound up around the, the back of this. So you can see on here, I have pressed this open for a reason. Otherwise, you press it like this, look at all the bulk I have in here, especially when I'm trying to put a flying geese on top and hit a point. There's, that just makes it more difficult. I'm pressing away from the center. All right, so I want my lettering to be right side up. I'm gonna double check that before I sew. If you're like me, you sometimes get in a hurry and you think, oh, I've got this, and you take it to your machine and sew it, and you have one side upside down. Yep, I've done that. I have done that. I double check it now. It's worth my, it's faster to double check it than it is to seam rip it, right? Let's go sew that. I'm gonna take these threads off the top and I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna set my seam again. And we're gonna press this out. All right, I do have a little bit of steam going in my iron. I think you guys can see that. I do press with steam when I'm doing this. I want those seams to lay nice and flat. Wool pressing mat is glorious for this. All right, there's our gift. Now, let's add the other piece. I'll just stick this over here. So now, I have some very small squares. These are one inch squares. And I've got a little uh, one by one and a half rectangle. And so we're gonna sew and flip. Sew and flip, blind geese. This is easy, right? You've done this before, only probably a lot bigger pieces. You put your square on here, draw a line corner to corner, sew, flip. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna use a friction pen, a small ruler, and we're gonna draw a line corner to corner, just like that. Let's do a couple of those, because I know I'm gonna need at least one more. It's the more perfect you are at every single step, the better your results will be in the end. All right? Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna take my little square, my little tiny square like that, or my rectangle I should say, and now my little tiny square, I'm gonna start here and sew to here. Now let's talk about where I'm actually sewing. You can sew on the line, which is normally how we do this. However, I have found that when I sew directly on the line on something this tiny, my little corner, when I flip it, it's slightly off, just ever so slightly. And I know why, it's because of the fold, the depth of the fold. And you can see that here is the depth of this fold right here in the fabric. So to compensate for that, I'm not gonna sew on the line, I'm gonna sew right next to it, okay? Takes a little bit of practice, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. I've got my line on there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pin and I'm actually gonna pin this little tiny square on here. I know you guys think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you this is the way to do it. I need to hang on to this just like that so that it will not move when I go to sew this. I'm gonna sew this right next to the line 
Let's go do that. All right, now let's press this. No, nope. let's trim it first, sorry. <laughs> I knew there was something else I needed to do. Let's trim it first, then we press. Okay, so I'm gonna set my seam and I'm gonna flip this up. That looks great. Perfect, exactly where I want it. And give it a little bit of steam. I'm just gonna hold that there for a minute. I want it nice and flat. Just like that. Okay. All right, let's put the other side on. We're halfway there. Same way. Put this on. Let's put another pin in this just to be on the safe side. Because I don't want that little square to move. All right, so now I'm gonna start on this corner right here. I'm gonna sew corner to corner on this side of the seam, or this side of my line, excuse me. I'm sewing on just a needle's width away on this side. Okay, here we go. All right, the other thing we're gonna do is because I'm starting on a point, I'm actually gonna sew on a little piece of fabric Kind of a lot of people, I've heard it called a security blanket. I think that's really a cute name for it. So a starter strip, a security blanket, whatever you want to call that, so that that machine does not eat that point as we're going along. So now as I'm sewing, I'm directly next to my line. Oh, I got on a little bit. That'll be fine. There we go. You saw how slow I did that. All right, here we go. All right, so now let's trim a quarter inch away. All right, set this guy aside. I'm gonna set my seam. I'm gonna flip it. Oh, that looks great. I like that. We'll hold our iron there for a minute. Oh, it's nice and flat. I love that. Okay, so you can see here how I have a good quarter inch here, which is exactly what I want. Everybody's even. This looks great. All right, let's put our little end squares on now. Let's set all these extra pieces aside here. All right, I'm gonna put a square here and a square here. We're gonna attach it to our gift like this and we will have a gift block. So again, my little square, guess what? I'm gonna pin it. I know you're thinking, a little tiny square? Come on, Tammy. No, really, we're gonna pin it because I already know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna start sewing and as I get to this end, those two ends are gonna start coming apart and you can't fix it because it's already under your foot and your needle's already going through it, right? And then you have to use your trusty seam ripper, which I said I wasn't gonna use today, all right? Really, he's just sitting right here, just in case. Let's leave him there. So let's press this out. I'm gonna set my seam, flip this toward the charcoal color, just like that. And we're going to take our other square and put it on the other side. And I'm gonna pin it again, because I don't want this stuff moving around on us. We have no room for error when you're sewing these little tiny pieces like this. All right, so my pin is out of my seam allowance, we're gonna sew a quarter inch. Okay, let's press this out. There we go. I'm gonna give this a little bit of steam here. There we go. All right, 
we have a bow, we have a gift, let's put the two together. Hold this down. Ha, I love it when they all line up. That is fantastic. All right, so now I have a lot of seams going on. I have, grab my little scissors here and trim this thread out of the way. Okay, so we've got, these seams are going this way. These seams are coming back at me. So I'm gonna put some pins in this. We have one here to hang on to this. I want one in the center because when I sew over this, sometimes when you sew over a lump, like you have seams converging, sometimes when you sew over that, those seams want to shift a little bit. I don't want them shifting. I want them staying right there so I can hit that quarter inch right where I want to. All right, here we go. And now I'm also gonna pin this seam because this seam is going back towards me and I already know what's gonna happen. They're gonna try to flip when I sew over them. I don't want them to do that. I want them to stay put as well. All right, so we have three pins in here, one, two, three. They're all set away from my seam allowance so I can stitch along here. Let's go finish this. All right, we have our gift sewn. Let's see how we did. I love that. Okay, so let's press it. So let's set our seam. And now let's take a look at this. I can tell this seam, all of these seams, they wanna go this way. I'm gonna let them do that. I'm not gonna force them to go back and I'm not gonna press them open. I'm gonna let them go the way they wanna go because that's how they're gonna lay the flattest, right? Sometimes I just let the fabric tell me which way it wants to go, especially in something this small, all right? Let's give it a shot of steam on the front. Make sure we didn't take any tucks. That looks beautiful. All right, so we have a cute little gift block. I hope you picked up some tips on how to sew miniature pieces. Just remember to sew slowly. Use your pins. Definitely use your pins. Use a ruler to cut your pieces with, not your mat. It's much more accurate. Use a sharp, small needle. I recommend a size 70, 10. When you're sewing little tiny pieces, use a 50 weight thread. Finer thread, smaller needle, and you'll be just fine piecing like a pro in no time. So if you found some value in what I've taught you today, please give me a thumbs up and hit the bell, and you'll be notified first the next time we release a Shabby Fabrics tutorial.